I felt fear for my mom and my family back home. My heart just literally dropped. The day after he was elected was also my brother's birthday. He was turning 21. For others, 21 is an exciting year. And for him, it had to be a day of fear. I always knew that there was still a great majority of America that um, still held beliefs that um, were not conducive for progress. History has been made, Jake. This is a moment a lot of people are going to remember. My activist side started to be like, well, I want to go out there. I want to, you know, show this feeling that I have inside. Eventually someone said like, there's something going on right now. So I headed out, you know, I headed out and I found the people who were feeling the same way I was feeling at the moment and who wanted to let everybody know that, you know, we are still here. I sat down and like, I just literally watched the anime because I know there was a, a, there was a protest going on. A huge amount of people, huge. And I feel that solidarity really, really uh, resounded in me and, you know, gave me a little hope in that kind of time of despair. I didn't feel like I had to take action at that moment. I could just, you know, just be myself as an undocumented person and just relax. At the rally, I was like, you know, let me lead an undocumented, unafraid chant, and I did. And I feel like that was really powerful, just, you know, seeing everyone, seeing their, their solidarity with the undocumented and various other communities. I didn't take it as like, oh, like, my whole life is over, you know, because I don't feel like undocumented people are, were defenseless, you know. I tell my parents, my family that, you know, I have options, like I'll go to Nam or Canada drop the visa requirements for uh, Mexican citizens, so I'd probably go over there and then there's actually a, a, a pathway to residency. But every single time I try to make plans for my future on the back of my head, if I could still do it. I would make like three, five year, five year plans in the future. Right now, the future for me means more of like this year and next year. I was going to come in, do my majors, become a teacher educate others and you know like possibly like help others like you know go to college just like how my teachers influence me being a first year right now and not even knowing what major i want to go into like now other stuff like that just like I, I, even if i do choose a major even if i do try to study something like is it really gonna plan out the basic right of being able to work is so important, you know? Important in the sense of allowing people to plan for a future. I feel like it's my responsibility, given the tools and resources that this institution has given me, given the fact that I'm a political science major, I think it's up to me to be able to stand up and fight for those that don't have a, that can't find a voice for themselves. Persistence and resistance is something that I see in my future and that regardless of the many uncertainties that it now has, I know that I will always have a community behind me that gives me certainty in a time of uncertainty. Ask for help. I used to think like you can't, you, it makes you less, it makes you less solid, it makes you less strong to ask for help, but now I feel like, you know, we have a community for a reason. You can't live your life in fear because that's just not the, that's not the way to live. We should not feed into the dreamer narrative or into just one narrative because that's what I've been seeing in a lot of undocumented pages and coalitions. There's some, there's folks that want to appeal to like the Trump administration and criminalize certain folk, you know, certain undocumented folk while in, or, in order for them to be okay. Find a voice like within all of us and try to find that empowerment and not be silenced. I understand why people feel afraid right now. The, you know, regression back towards like policies like secure communities that, you know, commandeer local resources and local uh, sheriff offices to do federal work, which is completely unconstitutional, you know? Uh, but the Republicans are not gonna say anything about that because it only matters when it serves their agenda, but when the government is overreaching for things that they agree with, they're silent, right? There's always people that are in the same shoes that you are and just being able to connect with them will help you find a sense of home away from home. I know there's there's people 
who, who are undocumented commit crimes. You know, there's people who are undocumented that, that commit atrocities, you know, but generalizing a whole group for individuals is it, it, just toxic and it just feeds into the xenophobia that has always been prevalent in the U.S. when, some, when the economy is not stable. We blame it on the immigrant groups, you know? It, it's a cycle, so I feel like we need to break that cycle, especially with the undocumented folk. Now, there are not just Latinx, you know, there's black undocumented folk, there's Asian undocumented folk, you know, that we, we forget. Continue to empower other youth, continue to protest, continue to rally, continue to make our voices heard and like show him that while we are like being affected, we're not afraid. We've done it before, before DACA, we got paid. You know, before everything, before the Dream Act, we went to school, and before like all these executive orders that we have today, we got stuff done because you know we're luchadores. We have a future. Undocumented people have a future in this country, and we're not. We shouldn't. We shouldn't feel like it's over just because Trump is the president.